بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الأطيبين الأطهرين سيما بقية الله في الأراضين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وجه الصباح علي ليل مظلم وربيع أيام علي محرم والليل يشهد لي بأني ساهر إن طاب للناس الرقاة فهوموا بقرعة لو أنها بي لملم نسفت جوانب وساخ يلملم the face of the morning is like a dark night. Which was sabahi alayya laylun mudlim. And the spring of my days, warabi'u ayyami alayya muharram. The spring of my days are haram unto me. And the night testifies, wal-laylu yashhadu bi yashhadu li bi anni sahir. The night testifies that I've been up all night that I'm an insaniyah. In taba lil-nas al-ruqad fahubibu when the people go to sleep. بقرحة لو أنها بيلملم. I have an ache, pain. If it was this pain was to be under the mountain of يلملم. يلملم is one of the stations. مواقيت الحج جبل يلملم. نصف جوانبه وساخ يلملم. It would be the the mountain would be destroyed if he was to feel the pain that I'm feeling. This is what what it's saying. بقرحة لو أنها بيلملم نسفت جوانبه وساخ يلملم قلقا تقلبني الهم بمضجعي ويغور فكري في الزمان ويتهم ما خلت أن الدهر من عاداته تروى الكلاب به ويضم الضيغم Never thought at one point in time the ages would bring where the, where the dogs are, are drinking and the lions are thirsty ويقدم الأموي وهو مؤخر ويؤخر العلوي وهو مقدم مثل ابن فاطمة يبيت مشردا ويزيد في لذاته متنعم يرقى منا عابر أحمد متأمرا في المسلمين وليس ينكر مسلم ويضيق الدنيا على ابن محمد حتى تقاضفه الفضاء الأعظم خرج الحسين من المدينة خائفا خرج الحسين من المدينة خائفا كخروج موسى خائفا يتكتم وقد انجلى عن مكة وهو ابنها فكأنما المأوى عليه محرم بطل إذا 
ركب المطهم خلته جبلا أشم يخف فيه مطهم حسمت يديه المرهفات وأنه وحسامه من حدهن لأحسم ما خلت بعدك أن تشل سواعدي وتكف باصرتي وظهري يقسم صلى الله عليه وسلم وآل محمد صل على محمد وآل محمد قال الله تعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل إنما أعظكم بواحدة أن تقوموا لله مثنا وفرادا ثم تتفكروا ما بصاحبكم من جنة إن هو إلا إن هو إلا بين يدي عذاب شديد الله سبحانه وتعالى says that I ask you I implore you in a way قل say O Muhammad to them that I will only give you one major advice أن تقوم لله مثنا وفرادا that you may stand up in singles or in pairs ثم تتفكر then you may think that your friend which is the Holy Prophet and إن بصاحبكم ما بصاحبكم من جنة that he is not what he's being accused of. This one lady living in a society similar to our society, she looks and she sees that her only scapegoat, her only way out, is this husband that she ever loved. She looks, she came to the point of time that she was afraid to leave her door. Because once she opens up the door and goes outside, she falls into this trap called society that she very much disliked. So she would take comfort within her own home, either when she was by herself or whenever her husband was to come home. And her husband would always ask her, why do you always stay home? Why don't you interact with society? She would say, I'm, I'm fine the way I am. She would battle inside the troubles that she is having with the outside world. This outside world has caused her so much pain that the pain, the pain is so unbearable. Yet she will not even tell her husband about the pain that she is going through because she doesn't want to trouble her husband. Yet when she goes to the outside world, she looks and she can tell what society is today, very similar to society of today. And the days passed and this lady was comforted as she found out she was pregnant. And she thought to herself, the first and foremost thing I need to do is, I want to make sure that this child does not go to the outside unmerciful world. Because if he comes out and enjoys them, he might be just like them. And I don't want to look at my child the same way I view everybody else. From the get-go, she had concentrated and she wanted to be fixed and she wanted to put a fence around her child who is not even born yet. The child is still in his mother's womb. And this mother goes and she realizes as she thinks and she has all these things that come to her, her child is feeding as well the stress of his mother and the worries of his mother. And finally, and her husband was a merchant. He would go for, for days, for months, and come back to the house. And she would really take comfort in her husband whenever he comes back. So on one day, her husband came back only to see a smile on her face. And, he, and she made sure, even though she was going through this problem that she was, and it's a very, very normal problem, she made sure that their smile was there as soon as her husband came in. Her husband noticed nothing. Because first of all, she had no reason in front of her husband because he was the epitome of manhood, the epitome of manners. Her husband was everything. She wanted her own society within this husband of hers. One day, on one of the trips that her merchant husband was taken, and as she is waiting the time period where he is supposed to come back, 
she hears a hard knock on her door. Very alarmed, in the middle of the night, she gets up, picks up her baby with her stomach. She opens the door, and as she opens the door, as if a lady is carrying something, and she drops it to the ground, and it breaks. The glass shatters. This woman took a few unwilling steps backwards, and she fell to the ground. The news, the messenger, just gave her the news that her society was just died. That everything she saw, that she smiled for in this world, just died. Her husband had passed away on one of his merchant deals, and they came bearing the bad news to this female. With her, part of her stress over the child, and part of her stress, what happened, everything that was day, now became night. The only thing that she had hope in, the only person she had hope in, had, had died. She lived and she swore and she gave an oath that she will take care of the child. She knew that there was one man in the society. She says, thank God that I have another man and I will produce a man just like that man. His son will be just like him if God was to give me a son, or his daughter will be like him if Allah was to give me a daughter. And this patient woman endured, and endured the troubles of life. And she stayed within the society of her own home. It was her, her husband now, it's her and her own child. And God willing, finally this woman gives a birth to a child. She only hoped that this child had a father so that when he was born, the first thing he would look at, he would say, father, father, normally the first thing that a child looks for. She had the child and she nurtured the child and she took care of the child. Now the child was an orphan from the father's side. She took care of him. At two years old, three years old, she would tell the child so he wouldn't be subjected to the society. She told the child that about a society that once lived. She told him about the society of his father. And the child grew with these memories of his father. And he had hope that someday we will have a society like the society of his father. Only this time it's going to encompass more than one. It's going to have more than one individual giving to this society. And she always promised this child, as he always asked the mother, when can I go see my father? When can I visit my father? And since the father died on the trip, the grave where they buried him was away. Yet this child was so anxious to see, to finally see his own the father's grave. He wants to bring all these traits that his mother told him and apply it at least to something sentimental, even though it may be a grave. And the day came at six years old. This mother was very worried about her son, and she decided it is time to fulfill the promise, the oath she gave her son, and she takes a caravan, and they head out all the way to arrive at the grave site of her husband, of that child's father. The child was six years old, he arrives, when they arrive at the site, they get out of the caravan, she takes her sons, she takes her son by the hand, she walks up to the grave, and she places the son right next to the grave. As if telling the man beneath the grave, there's another example of you, I'm making sure that I keep this within. This is another example. This is your son. He came to pay you a visit. The son that you never saw. The child turns away after the funeral ceremonies that he did. The child turns away. And the mother realizes a drop of tears on the child's cheeks coming down. She realized that the child has connected with his father beneath the grave. And she takes him, they get back into the caravan. And as they are walking a few miles, the child falls asleep.
just like every six-year-old child falls on a trip. The only problem here when the child wakes up is when the caravan stopped. The caravan stopped. The child wakes up very troubled. When you wake up, you are very troubled. He wakes up troubled. He looks around, he finds nobody within the caravan. He opens, he gets out, and he sees a bunch of people from the caravan gathered, only to be, to be given the news that the reason the caravan stopped together and he thought this is a familiar territory over here I don't want to venture into this territory so all the six-year-old child can do is just sit back and wait and see what the outcome is and surely enough the outcome came that the mother died on the way to this trip and the child finds himself a day later the day before he stood on the grave of the father now he stands on the grave of the mother he was a paternal orphan. Now he became a maternal orphan. And the child starts drifting the tears over his mother and the tears over his father. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to be so. So the child, as soon as he wakes up, there's no father. Instead of saying, my father, he says, my Lord. The father is Abdullah. The mother is Amina, and that child is the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The child grows up with no parents, and he grows up just like mostly every child orphan with no parents were thinking. And meditation became the greater part of his life. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came and gave him the message, he would walk around and deliver the message in the order that Allah ordered him to do so. While he's doing that, he would walk around and he would say, People, Inni nadirun bayna yaday adabin shadeed. I am a warner telling you about a severe punishment that will come. They wouldn't believe him. His uncle would follow him and they would say, لا تصدقوا ابن أخي إنه مجنون Don't, don't believe my, my nephew. He's, he's, he's crazy. He's not all up there. This Quranic verse came down. قل Muhammad, Say to them at this stage one thing. At this stage, you can only comprehend one piece of advice. And taqumu lillah mathna that you may go to Allah in twos and in ones. Go by yourselves. Why? Then reflect. Meaning, as long as there's a head that's saying Muhammad is crazy. What's the Indians going to do? They're going to follow the chief. Because they want, because people think for you. For example, when I'm born, my mother says Jesus is the son of God. Guess what? Jesus is the son of God. My mother says Moses was this. Guess what? Moses was that. I'm a product of my environment. Whether I like it or not, none of you chose religion due to reflection. No. Allah here says reflect. Even though you are born a Muslim, even though you are born a Jew, even though you are born a Christian, you should not be paralyzed. You're taking the ideas of those from before. Go. As long as you are a tribe, you're going to go with what the chief says. Muhammad's crazy. You got it. But when you go home and think in twos or ones and think about it, think, is this man really clear? You will come out with a different result. Is Jesus the Son of God? As long as my church father is saying he's the Son of God, guess what? He's the Son of God. Although everything within me 
that God gave me logical disagrees. But as if they're saying, logic does not stand a chance against peer pressure. Absolutely not. We are trying to prove to people that God existed. Why? Because they were born into families that didn't believe in Allah. We are at this stage and we're trying to tell them this is a psychological issue. Allah exists, but the peer pressure that you were born in, how? I was born, the first diaper that they gave me was a Muslim diaper. The first toy I got was a Muslim toy. The first toothbrush. The first girl I loved was a Muslim girl. At 15 years old, guess what? What am I going to be? A Muslim. The air that I used to breathe was a Muslim air. Now you want to come and tell me Jesus is the Son of God? Are you kidding me? Similarly, if you were a Christian or Jewish or didn't believe in God, and you had this childhood of, 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 of non-teaching, non of ignorance, and I want to come 20 years later when you're 20 years old, I'm supposed to have one statement to tell you, what's wrong with you? Oh, this whole time you've been missing one statement? That nobody knew how to say it except me? No. You have built a blockade where you're saying, no, nothing comes in. Whatever, whatever you think seems logical, to me isn't logical because I built a facade. You're not allowed to penetrate. Just like our children, when we leave them be for 10, 15 years, they build this facade, I'm, I'm rotten, I'm, I'm collapsing, right? And you try to teach them at 18 years old, you walk up to your priest or to your scholar, you say, I need help with my daughter. Really, what's wrong? Well, she's this, she's that. Okay, what happened? Well, uh, how old is she? She's 18. Where were you when she was five? Should have came to me when she was five, not when she was 18. Well, I don't like the way she dresses. Well, guess what? None of us like the way anybody dresses. Not because dressing is now an occupational code according to God. Dress code is according to age nowadays. For example, I may have somebody, a relative that for years and years I say, you better dress up properly, properly, properly. Finally, I see the fruits. My God, they're dressing properly. And I thought it was because of me preaching. Little did I know, the lady is 35 years old. 35 years old, they got their own dress code. She's not going to dress up like an 18-year-old. Whatever you say, it's not going to happen. It's an age thing. She outgrew that phase. So Allah says, Judgment Day, when, I, when you had the chance, you failed the test. You can't take the test later on when you're older. You can't take the mathematical test when you're older. So here Allah says to the people, Muhammad, say unto them, I will give you one advice, think. Think, Islam invites you to think before anything else. They came to the Prophet and the Prophet says, بَلْ قَالُوا إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَىٰ أُمَّةٍ وَإِنَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Meaning we found our forefathers like that and we're just following their footsteps. It says, even if I would bring you something better than what your forefathers had, maybe your fathers didn't go to school, they didn't learn. So no problem. Don't even come. There, don't even go there. They were very inconsiderate with the prophet. They didn't want to, but he knew that he had a message to deliver. He knew this message had to be delivered, and he knew he had to be considerate with them. Although they were very inconsiderate, the way they approached his teachings, the way we are inconsiderate nowadays, very inconsiderate on everybody around us, what everybody is trying to tell us. Funny story, they say this one lady is waiting for her airplane to leave. So what does a lady do at an airport when she wants to go, when she got time to kill? She goes, she buys, she goes, she buys a book and she buys a, uh, a bag of, uh, of sweets. She comes and sits down, opens up the book and starts reading. She wants to kill time before she gets on her plane. But what she doesn't realize, as she's reading the book, she became hungry. She turns over, she wants to, to grab her bag of sweets. 
Suddenly she finds the bag opened already. And she sees a little girl right next to her, taking each piece and eating the piece. This lady's thinking to herself, how inconsiderate this, how rude this girl is. She doesn't see anything, she keeps her cool. And before all the pieces run out, she grabs a piece. She eats it. She looks at the girl and the girl is smiling. She's eating and smiling. She reads more and more and more and she's looking and she's thinking in the back of her mind, what is, what, how, where do you bring these people from? What kind of world are we living in? Who raises these individuals, even at the airport? You come and you sit next to me and you eat my bag of sweets without you even saying, can I? How rude! Then she looks, she finds one last piece and she's boiling from within. This girl, I gotta slap this girl. My mother didn't teach you a lesson. So as she goes to grab the last piece, the young girl grabbed it. And she split it into two. And she gave her one piece and she took the other. This lady was appalled. What is this? She takes the piece and she's thinking, well, I never. She closes the book, picks up her bags, she leaves. She goes into the plane. She's so mad at what happened. She goes, she sits down in her in her seat, tries to put the book away, she's still mad at the situation, she opens up the, the zipper, she puts the book, she re realizes the bag of sweets that she bought is within the bag. She was eating the girl's sweets, and the girl was considerate enough to smile at her. And she's thinking, my God, I'm the inconsiderate one. This dialogue, that the Prophet came, he said, I know you're inconsiderate, but I have to deliver, I have to give you my job. This even happens between, he says, even if our parents believe this way, I'm going to be this way, no problem. Allah gives us a synopsis, judgment day, when everybody goes to their abode. He says, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِآيَاتِهِ Meaning, even though who be lied and who did and caused mischief and what have you, no problem. They still get their whatever is coming to them from the book of decree. Meaning, because you're not a good person or you decide to go against the will of Allah, it doesn't mean that we should stop allowing you to make money. No problem. You're going to get that share. أُولَٰئِكَ يَنَالُهُمْ نَصِيبُهُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ حَتَّى until they will get it until what? حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُلُنَا until our messengers come to them our angels يَتَوَفَّوْنَهُمْ come here قَالُوا أَيْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ where are the ones you used to seek beside Allah the ones you used to go for help they look around and they say, قَالُوا ضَلُّوا عَنَّا We don't know, they're lurking somewhere. ضَلُّوا عَنَّا وَشَهِدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَافِرِينَ They said, we have no recourse in front of these angels. We allowed you to be the way you are. And this is where are your helpers, you have no more helpers. No problem. What happens? قَالُ Comes the greater voice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ ادْخُلُوا فِي أُمَمٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ فِي النَّارِ There's already generations before you waiting in hell from the humans, from the jinn, follow them. قَالَ ادْخُلُوا Enter. كُلَّمَا دَخَلَتْ أُمَّةٌ Every time a new generation goes in, لَعَنَتْ أُخْتَهَا It curses its sister. Meaning, your generation will curse your parents' generation. Why? It was you that did this to me. كُلَّمَا دَخَلَتْ أُمَّةٌ لَعَنَتْ أُخْتَهَا This generation curses the generation before. Why? You didn't know how to raise us. You didn't pay attention to us. You didn't show us the right way. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we doing here? لَعَنَتْ أُخْتَهَا حَتَّى إِذَا دَارَكُوا فِيهَا جَمِيعًا 
until all of them are there, meaning all generations are done. We put them from the beginning of Adam till the end. They're done. Hatta idha daraku fiha jamiyan. While they were nobody, no more. Khalas, let's go. What's going to happen? The latter ones said, "Qalat ukhrahum li ulahum." The last generation that walked in said to the parents, the generation of the parents. So Allah, haulai awaluna. They caused us to go astray. So what are you saying? Get you out of the hellfire? No, you can't. You know you can't. You get in, you ain't get out. The only thing they can say is Double the punishment for them. I know we're not getting out. Double the punishment. Allah says Oh, both of your punishments are going to be doubled. Yours and theirs. You don't understand why. When the First generation heard this. Oh, the first said to the latter, says, Even يعني ما كان لكم علينا فضل. Oh, you have. Oh, it's not our fault after all. Why? It doesn't paralyze us. Meaning, because we were your parents and you're living in this society, it doesn't mean your mind is paralyzed. You need to move. إنما أعظكم بواحدة. Go and start thinking. Use it before you pay homos on it. إذا ما كان لكم علينا من فضل. You have no say so. You have. You're not better than us. Then do what? فذوق العذاب بما كنتم تكسبون. You better taste what you were hoarding. What you what you gathered. إن الذين كذبوا بآياتنا واستكبروا عنها لا تفتح لهم أبواب الجنة. We will not open the doors of heaven. ولا يدخلون الجنة. Nor will they enter it until حتى يلج الجمل في سم الخياط. كذلك نجز المجرمين. The only way these individuals they're having this dialogue. This blames it on this, this blames it on this. They're going to go to heaven when? When the camel goes into the eye of the needle. And the camel does not go into the eye of the needle. كَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُجْرِمِينَ This was the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every opportunity the Prophet had, he came to deliver. Every opportunity, whether he had a headache, whether he had a death in his family, he always took an opportunity and taught the people. And so did Al Imam Al Hussein Salam Allahi Alayh on the battle of Karbala. He comes after the women of Hussein were taken to Syria, Al Sham. They come, they take him to Kufa first. From Kufa, they take him to Syria. Syria, who is it Syria awaiting them? Yazid ibn Muawiyah. He's waiting for the head. He's waiting for all Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt were walking and already, already the, the, the CNN said before they arrived that these people are from Khawarij. They have nothing to do with the religion. So the people were outside waiting to see these Khawarij and they find heads coming and they find women and children. And they start throwing rocks. Why? Because people are, they say these are khawarish, khawarish. You're looking, you see these are women and children. What are you doing? Doesn't matter. They follow the leader. They follow the chief. They're all Indians. Nobody thinks, nobody does that anymore. They arrive into where Yazid is. Yazid sets camp for these people. They call it Al-Khariba. Al-Khariba يعني وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ It's like the, the, the ghetto, the, the الوسخ والهي where they put the Ahlul Bayt, the grandson of the Prophet and the women and children are there. And when he was ready, His Majesty, may Allah amputate his ears, he calls them, he summons them to his palace. Zainab alayhi salam comes to the palace, Imam Zain al-Abideen, is in his early 20th, 
20s, he's the only thing that's left from Ahlul Bayt, the fourth holy Imam. He comes and Yazid says he's got the head of Imam Hussein playing with it, with a stick. And he wants to show it to the people, to his own household. And Yazid says, who are these people? Identify yourselves. Nobody says anything. Zainab alayhi salam. He sees a male figure between them. He says, who are you? He says, Ana Ali ibn al-Hussein. I am Ali, son of Hussein. He says, Ama qatal Allah Ali ibn al-Hussein? Didn't Allah kill? He says, no, the people killed. I had a brother by the name of Ali, son of Hussein. People killed him. Yazid, la'natullahi alayhi, he orders one of his orators to get up on the podium and start saying good things about his father and cursing Imam Ali in the lineage. The man gets up there, starts saying good things about Muawiyah, cursing Imam Ali. And Imam Zayn al-Abideen turns to him and he says, Ya Khatib, orator, لَقَدْ اشْتَغَيْتَ مَرْضَاتَ الْمَخْلُوقِ بِسَخَطِ الْخَالِقِ فَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَكَ مِنَ النَّارِ You purchase the satisfaction of the creation by upsetting the Creator. He says, Ya Yazid, he turns to Yazid. He says, أَتَأْذَنُ لِي أَنْ أَصْعَدَ تِلْكَ الْأَعْوَادِ Do you, do you allow me to get up, speak on these wooden pieces? He doesn't call it a podium, he says wooden pieces. Because a podium is a podium when the truth is being said. And what that orator just said is the untruth. أَتَأْذَنُ لِي أَنْ أَصْعَدَ تِلْكَ الْأَعْوَادِ Yazid said no. So the assembly of people says, Ya Yazid, مَا قَدَرُ مَا يُحْسِنُ هَذَا الْغُلَامِ well, what, what can he say, this 20-year-old boy? لا. He says, you don't know this man. إِنَّهُ إِذَا صَعَدَ لَنْ يَنْزِلْ إِلَّا بِفَضِيحَتِي وَفَضِيحَةْ آلْ أَبِي سُفْيَانِ If he goes, he will not come down before he does what? <coughs> he exposes me. Exposes. Now their curiosity became, wow. Minu, who is this individual if he gets up? He will not come down before he exposes you. Ya Yazid, Ya Yazid. They allow Imam Zil Abideen. Imam Zil Abideen, a day before, just lost his father. His brothers were all killed, massacred in the land of Karbala. And the first opportunity he takes, he says what? He says, Ayyuhan Nas, people. He didn't say, you killed, you did. He says, Ayyuhan Nas, uhadhirukum with dunya. I warn you about this world. It's going nowhere. These people were older than you and had more money and it got rid of them. You must enter them. You must enter them. هيهات هيهات لا بد باللحوق والملتقى فتذكروا ما مضى من أعماركم وما بقي وافعلوا فيه ما سوف يلتقي عليكم بالأعمال الصالحة قبل انقضاء الأجل وفروغ الأمل فعن قريب تؤخذون من القصور إلى القبور وبأفعالكم تحاسبون Very soon you will be taken from your palaces to your graves. فكم والله من فاجر قد استكملت عليه الحسرات وكم من عزيز قد وقع في مسالك الهلكات حيث لا ينفع الندم ولا يغاث من ظلم ووجد ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا أيها الناس من عرفني فقد عرفني People whoever knows me then they know me and whoever doesn't I will tell you who I am أيها الناس من عرفني فقد عرفني 
ومن لم يعرفني أنبأته بحسبي ونسبي أيها الناس أنا ابن مكة ومنى أنا ابن زمزم والصفاء أنا من صنف مكة من صنف منى صنف زمزم أيها الناس أنا ابن مكة ومنى أنا ابن زمزم والصفاء أنا ابن من حمل الركن بأطراف الرداء I'm the son of who is carried the Rukn Hajar Aswad with the edges of the mantle. Ayyuhannas, an abnu khayri man i'tazar wa rtada, an abnu khayri man imta'ala wa ahtafa, an abnu khayri man ta'afa wa sa'a, an abnu khayr man hajja wa labba, an abnu حمل على البراق في الهوى أنا ابن من أسري به من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى I am the son of whom was taken from مسجد الحرام into the farthest mosque أنا ابن من بلغ به جبريل إلى سدرة المنتهى أنا ابن من دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى. I am the one that prayed with the assembly of the angels. أنا ابن من صلى بملائكة السماء. أنا ابن من أوحى إليه الجليل ما أوحى. أنا ابن محمد المصطفى. I am the son of Muhammad. Until then, the people knew that he was from the lineage of their prophet. أيها الناس أنا ابن من ضرب خراطيم الخلق حتى قالوا لا إله إلا الله أنا ابن من ضرب بين يدي رسول الله بسيف وطعن برمح وهاجر الهجرة وبايع البيعة وقاتل ببدر وحنين أنا ابن صالح المؤمنين ويعسه بالمسلمين وتاج البكيانين وارث المشعرين وأبو الصبطين الحسن والحسين أنا ابن علي بن أبي طالب People know he says my father is also Ali they knew he was from the lineage of Rasulullah and Ali. And Ali had two sons, Al-Hasan and Al-Hussein. They didn't know is he from the lineage of Al-Hasan or Al-Hussein. Ayyuhal Nas, Ana ibn Naqiyat al-Juyub, Ana ibn Tahirat al-Uyub, Ana ibn Khadijat al-Kubra, أنا ابن خديجة الكبرى أيها الناس أنا ابن فاطمة الزهراء I'm from the lineage of Fatima Still they don't know is he from the Hassan of Al-Hussein أيها الناس أنا ابن المقتول غلما أنا ابن محزوز الرأس من القفا أنا ابن العطشان حتى قضى أنا ابن طريح كربلا I'm the son of he who lost his head I'm the son of he who they've taken his clothes away from him أيها الناس أنا ابن مسلوب العمامة والرداء أنا ابن من بكت عليه ملائكة السماء He starts crying. Everybody in the assembly starts crying. And Yazid wants to cut it off. He orders the, the caller to call for prayer. And it was not time for prayer. He says, Ayyuhal Mu'addin, call for prayer. And he starts calling for prayer. And Imam Zayl Abidin says, Shahida billahi lahmi wa dami. Ya Yazid, when the man arrived at Ashhadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah, says, Ya Yazid, is that man Muhammad my grandfather or yours? 
فإن قلت أنه جدك فقد كذبت وكفرت. If you say he's your grandfather, you have belied and transgressed. وإن قلت أنه جدي فلماذا قتلت عترته؟ If you say he's my grandfather, why did you kill his grandson? And everybody is crying and walked up to Imam Zain al Abidin. Everybody saying to Imam, Halli bin Tawba. When Nas Yafun, we drubun a la Ruz, we yakudun a wa Husayna. A person walks up to Imam, he says, Ya Imam, Halli bin Tawba, please forgive me. Wal Akhar Yakul, Ya Imam, Halli bin Tawba, in me the Rabkur Raksa Sharif Bihaja. I threw a rock at the holy head of Hussein. إني ضربت الرأس الشريف بحجر والإمام عليه السلام is saying don't worry. While the Imam was taken back to his place, Al Minhal, one of the companions says, I'm looking and I found a man on his cane and his legs appear as if they're two sticks from weakness. والصفرة ذادية عليه he says, I asked the bottom, they said, that's Imam Zayn al-Abideen. I walked up to him, I says, كيف حالك يا ابن بنت رسول الله? He says, يا من هال أصبحت العرب تفتخر على العجم بأن محمدا منها The Arab was shown off over the rest that Muhammad was of them. يا من هال أصبحت قريش تفتخر بأن محمدا منها قريش showing off that Muhammad is from them وإن عثرة محمد أصبحنا مقتولين مذبوحين مأسورين مشردين شاسعين عن الأمصار يا من هال إن الحبس الذي نحن فيه ليس له سقف. Where they put us, there is no cover. يا من هال إن الحبس الذي نحن فيه ليس له سقف. والشمس تصهرنا. And we are getting the rays of the sun. We're getting burned by the sun. فأمر ساعة وأخرج منها لضعف بدني وأرجع إلى عماتي وأخواتي خشية على النساء. من هذا says while I was speaking to him, a lady comes from the from the tent and she says when I asked the butter, they said this is her. This is his aunt Zainab, and she says to him, "Ila an tamli ya qurat aini, ila an tamli ya qurat aini, anashbi dishbi dala dhar shadat shamil." Ya Allah, Allahumma asaluk. الحسين وبأهل بيت الحسين أن تدخلنا الجنة يا الله بحق رسولك وأهل بيتك يا الله. Thank you for the ten nights. Thank Hajj Mahmoud and family and the organization for having us. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.